keep freezing. It's so cold. Oh, look, the sky is light already. Nice. One of the highlights of my day every day is still waving to my neighbor every morning when I leave. <laughs> uh, he's a retired guy, and every morning he's sitting on his couch, either reading or uh, I think talking to his relatives in the UK or something. But he's always on his couch every morning, and his window's open, and I can see him sitting on his couch in there. And every morning we wave at each other as I leave for work. He's such a good guy. Such a good guy, great neighbor to have. Can't wait for like summertime and uh, all these restrictions and things to be in the past so that we can go and have a barbecue with him. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's like highlight of my day every day. <laughs> there he is! <laughs> And this is another highlight. Could I have a large coffee with two cream and a shot of espresso, please? Yeah. No, that's it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Oh, that window struggled to get back up. I've been taking it easy on the super dupers. I want to leave them guessing. Okay, so with this out of the way, what? Oh, he just locked his doors. Thought he was honking at me. So once we get our Tims here, we're gonna head to uh, work, I believe. Thank God the truck is gonna be in the shop and nice and warm, ready to go. We're gonna start her up, let her get the juices flowing a little bit, warm her up just a little bit. It won't take too long since she's already inside. And, uh, Head on up to Winnipeg. I'm pretty sure we're gonna go straight there. We'll see what the load gods have for us when we show up. I feel like I'm late. Because the sun is in the sky already. Well, it's not in the sky. The sun is showing in the sky. The sun rays, not the sun, it's, you know what I mean. Look at that sky. And before you know it, the sun will actually be in the sky before I actually get to work. Yeah, it makes me feel like I'm late. I keep looking at the clock. Oh, nope, still 10 after 7. Okay, we're still on time. So like I was saying, I know for sure I've got to head into Winnipeg. I just don't know if I'm going to go right away or not. I have to consult with the load gods first. They tell me to go somewhere, I go. They tell me not to, I don't. Quite simple, quite simple. It's gonna be a good day though. You thought I wasn't gonna say it. It's gonna be a good day. Waved at my neighbor, got my Timmy's. I'm gonna go drive some trucks. Going home tonight. It's a good day. Looks like it's gonna be a wonderful day today. Just in case you didn't see it.
So you remember how I always say that I always check my trailer after uh, I've been loaded or unloaded, especially if I'm not allowed on the dock? I'm at one of those places now where I have to stay in my truck, I'm not allowed on the dock. So after I pulled out, I went to check my load and they did a very good job. They secured it in the trailer for me. Well, I didn't have to touch it again, it was perfect. But they forgot to put my hand jack back on the truck. So uh, it's a good thing I checked because if I would have just driven off and trusted, first of all, not even checked if they secured it, if I would have just driven off, uh, I would have only realized that my jack was missing at my next, at the next dock, which is, well, it's not too far from here, but it's, it would have been a pain to come all the way back, right? So now I was able to call them and let them know, hey, uh, you took my jack. I'd like it back, please. <laughs> so they're going to shuffle things around. All the docks are full now because uh, after I pulled out, someone pulled back in right after me. So they're going to open up a dock here for me. I'm going to back in. They're going to throw the jack back in my trailer. That's why it's always important just to double check. If you're not allowed on the dock, make sure you go when you pull forward. Before you close the doors, check to make sure that the freight is, number one, secured. And uh, number two, make sure that everything is there that's supposed to be there and that they only took what they were supposed to take. Otherwise, you might be running around the city trying to figure out where your pallet jack is. Or worse, where your freight is that wasn't supposed to be unloaded. It's always a good idea to double check everything. It was just an honest mistake. So now that we've got our trailer all loaded up, we're pretty heavy for our uh, little, little pump trailer. We're heading on down into rural Manitoba again. So I didn't spend too much time in the city today. I'm okay with that. There's another one of those buses. When did Winnipeg get all those buses? It's one of those that bend in the middle. I've never seen those until I started doing this city stuff again. It must be new because when I lived in the city, they didn't have nothing fancy like that. Am I the only one that thinks it'd be fun to ride those? I don't know. I'm not really one for public transit, but that's a fancy bus. St. Norbert says. One of the French corners of Winnipeg. Head down 75. This is the same highway as the Interstate 29 on the other side of the border. We're headed south now. So we're pointed towards the United States. We're not going to make it quite that far. But if I were to keep going, this would turn into Interstate 29. This would take me all the way down to Kansas City. I just saw those videos from the 100 car pileup in Fort Worth, Texas. I guess that would have happened yesterday for you. It happened this morning here. Wow. Made me nauseous seeing those cars just get twisted and destroyed by those trucks. Why were people going so fast? I understand it's Texas. People aren't used to ice probably didn't even know they were driving on it. Man, if the road is shiny and you look down at your thermometer and it's about the freezing point, it's gonna freeze, it's gonna turn to ice. You gotta slow down. At least 10 people died there and more are trapped still. Just a nasty pile up and it's, I know accidents happen and everybody wants to act like they, they wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have happened to them, you know, but especially down south where you're not used to driving in winter conditions, it's even worse there because here the snow falls on the ground, we're prepared for it, we salt our highways, and we go about our day, like they're all cleared by the time I go to work, it's salted and good to go, right? We're prepared for it, and when it does get icy, I grew up here. I tend to know pretty much what I'm doing on the ice for the most part. I, I've driven on ice a lot. Down in the south, they have not had that experience. They don't drive on snow and ice at all. And down there when the snow falls, it hits the ground and it melts. And then it freezes, making it sheer ice so it's even more slippery than the roads would be here got to be extra careful when you're in the south and it's near the freezing point. But uh, I know I'm preaching to the choir here. You guys 
guys all know this already. But please slow down on the ice, especially down south, because it, 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 it for some reason is slipperier down there. A lot of you guys run with summer tires, which I understand, because you guys don't really have winter. Why would you have winter tires on, right? It's going to be extra slick for you. Scary to see those pileups. I hope none of you had any loved ones involved in that, and if you did, sending all kinds of warm thoughts your way, because that was nasty. I posted some of the video on my Facebook page if you want to see it. There's more videos out there that have gone viral of it. But it was a bad one. My deliveries this afternoon are taking me to Rosenorn in Yonsei. Looks like it's just as cold on this side of the river as on our side of the river. They have less shelter on this side. This side is pretty much all cleared for agriculture, whereas on the other side where I'm from, we have a lot more bush still standing. So we don't get those we don't get as much of those winds all the time, but out here there's nothing stopping the wind, it's just flat land. It's really windy and really cold really fast. The lovely Manitoba gravel roads again. Don't you throw rocks at me. Better slow down and move over, bud. Come on, you got lots of road, move over. You're supposed to get right over to the edge, man, so you don't throw rocks at everybody. Some people just don't care. They'll just blow right past you on the gravel road, spit you spit rocks at you. Get all kinds of stone chips all over your truck and windshield. So now from Rosenor, we gotta make our way across to Otterburn on our, on my side of the river. So we've already crossed the red. We're on the east side now. As you can tell, a little bit more bush off guard right here. And this is the best way to get there. This is a provincial highway, by the way. We'll get around to paving it one of these years, but it's good. It's good the way it is now. It's fine. It's good to go. Mint. I've got a tandem on the back of this 
J-cab I'm driving, so it helps me carry a little bit more weight that way. Yeah, we're gonna go see what other stuff we can pick up. So I think this will be the last pickup of the day. I got one skid in here, it's going back to Steinbach. So it's not bad. Got us a full trailer's worth delivered today already. We're open for maybe two, but hey, we tried. Oh, this door is so heavy. Oh, this is so awkward to open. See, this is what I was talking about. This uh, this gate here comes out, right? Maybe I can show you better from this side. Like it comes out past this. There used to be a tailgate on here. Now it doesn't have that. It just has this bumper left on here. So that's why I have a step ladder in there. It's a lot easier to get in. But this door, the rollers over here keep jumping out of the track. That one too, but it's in the track now. That one is, but that one's always jumping out. And it makes it almost impossible, almost impossible to get this thing open sometimes. Sort of gotta, see, sometimes you just gotta jump up here. What in the world? Like the Hulk, this door needs some work. See, it keeps, this one keeps jumping out when it goes up there, and this one is out. So the mechanic knows about it. He's gonna take a look at it as soon as he can. But uh, yeah, needs a little bit of a wash, doesn't it? My pallet jack here, didn't forget it anywhere today. The first place tried to keep it. I caught them. <laughs> they didn't do it on purpose, but. They forgot it on their dock, so I had to go back and get it. And a uh, little pallet of goodies over there for a very lucky person around in the Steinbeck area. I don't even know what it is. It's a bunch of random stuff. We better go. We gotta go. I just have to check on this door. One sec. I should be using my ladder. Oh, I should be using my ladder, but Gotta to prove to you I'm not an old man yet. Yeah, I'd like to get this door completely replaced, but I'd like a lot of things in life. Everything costs money though, right? And this door still works, so why would they replace it, right? <laughs> I think if we just got the wheels fixed, it would, uh, did I put those strings back in there? If we just got the wheels fixed on there, I think it would help a lot already. Yes, I did. I put those in there. I'm going to make sure of that. Yeah, it's just, that's an old door, but it still works just fine, right? And I've learned how to work with it. Okay, so let's go get this uh, delivered today. Yeah, what's the time now? Oh, it's four o'clock. We better hurry. Maybe we can get this uh, unloaded today yet. I was just waiting around here for a little while. I think they they were gonna send another truck here to transfer some stuff over or something, but that fell through and didn't work. So I don't know. They they had me sitting here for about five minutes. Not too long. And they just uh, radioed me here and told me. Time to get my button gear and give her. Just try and get this skid off today. So we'll be going straight there, no stopping for Timmy. So we're in a bit of a rush now. And tomorrow's another day. And then after tomorrow, it's a long weekend. My first long weekend since I've been on a normal schedule, Monday to Friday. Monday is Louis Rail Day, aka Trader Day. It's uh, a holiday in Manitoba here. Uh, it's honoring Louis Rail, who is the founder of Manitoba, who founded Manitoba in defiance of the Canadian government in Ottawa. Uh, he fought against 
the Canadians in Ottawa, and then Ottawa sent out all their soldiers and pretty much invaded what was Manitoba, its own little country. And then we became a province of Canada and we lived happily ever after. Somehow, that's not exact. Just don't quote me on that, but that's the, uh, the paraphrased version of Manitoba history. You can always look it up on Google if you want to. Maybe we'll talk about Louis Rail a different day. Maybe we'll talk about him on Monday, since it's his day on Monday. Huh? Hey, he got me a day off of work. We may as well figure out who he is, right? One more pallet to drop off, and then we can go home. Well, we gotta fuel the truck first, bring it back, park her inside the shop, and tuck her in for night, and then we can go home. And that's that, an empty trailer. Dirty, but that's what the broom is for. Well, brooms, one is half a broom. That new one is the one I just bought. It's amazing, I can get this trailer done in literally like one minute, the whole thing. We're gonna do that when we get back. Let's uh, close her up here. are slow today. Yikes. I'm excited too. I guess that was it. One big burst of energy. Just reminding me that I'm a rock star when I come home. Commander, the boss is home. Did you notice? Oh, he noticed. He was very excited when I got here. Yeah, he wouldn't stop screaming like a little girl. You're not a girl, you just love your mom, right buddy? So much that you sound like a little He just loves his mama. That's what he does when she gets home. Right buddy? Someone got a very nice new sweater today. I look like I'm from, I'm a rich kid from an 80s yacht club. <laughs> but it's so comfortable. <laughs> So how's work today? Slow, but good. I'm happy to be there, so. On a scale of one to 10, how pregnant do you feel? Not at all, but hopeful. Hopeful, so is that like a 12? 14 again. 14 again, still a 14. And like 75% of the women that I served today were either pregnant or had babies with them. It was weird. Maybe it's a good sign. Maybe, I hope so. Made me jealous, that's for sure. What do you think, Wiener? 
I'm just standing there all awkward. We go to bed now. Wiener. As soon as I got home, they all came rushing out here, and Wiener went straight to his bed. Didn't care one bit that I was home. Did you guys notice that in that clip? He just walked right past all the excitement. Just went to his bed over there. You did it. Didn't nice. even care that the rock star was home. More well, like a washed up country singer from the 80s. Mom's a rock star. I'll take it. I like 80s country. It's a good decade. Good decade, good music. Good people were born in the 80s. It is known. It is known. <laughs> so that's the end of the vlog today. Thanks for hanging out. We're gonna do another vlog tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday and it's a long weekend. So we get Saturday, Sunday, and Monday off work. At least I think so. I'm pretty sure. We'll just have to find out. We'll see you right here tomorrow. Let's do this all again.